human nature and so we make those choices based upon a growing knowledge that we have so Paul is saying don't murmur and complain God is working and he's working it out but you have to cooperate with him he knows more about the situation that we could ever know for joining us today. It's our continual prayer that something has blessed your heart or even changed your life as you listen. It's our vision to share the healing love of Jesus Christ with all who will hear. Would you consider helping us through partnering with us through your giving? Your gift of any amount will help share the gospel of Jesus Christ through this broadcast, Healing the Brokenhearted. And as a special thank you for your gift of $20 or more, we will send you a copy of The Healing Station. Please visit our website at ApostleLarryHearing.com or you can find us on social media. Thank you. So he called me. I was one of the ones that he called. And none of them responded. In his hour of need. Not a one. They were too busy. Or they, didn't, they took it lightly. Whatever it was. Now. I was no better than they. Here's what happened. So he called. Uh, the, the secretary called me. And I, 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 I said okay. Just, just uh, you know. I, I, I got the message. And the first thing that came from me was. I, I don't have time. It wasn't important to me. And a second thought, I said, well, I will pray about it. So to my amazement, as I began to pray to the Lord about his situation, God said to me, so these things were, people were hindering the vision that I've given to him. And I said, oh, wait a minute now, wait a minute. I said, that vision was from you? Because I had just kind of concluded that if it was God, then it would have been successful. So I just pretty much just says, I, in my mind, I didn't say to him, I didn't have time. I, I'm not even going to bother to go. Keep in mind, it was a very needed hour for another brother in the faith. But in spite of all that, my reasoning got in the way. It was only somehow I had a second thought, and that must have been God, to say, well, at least I'll pray about it. And I prayed about it, and God began to tell me that people were hindering his vision and so on and trying to stop the vision what he had given. And when I heard that, wait a minute, you, this is a vision from God? It changed my whole attitude. It changed my whole attitude. Because in my reasoning, I didn't feel like people could stop or hinder a vision that came from God. But when I found out that this was from God, I repented. And I said, okay, God, I'm going. Now I went. And the person's spouse was the only one that showed up and myself. And in court, they ripped him apart. He didn't have the backup. And so I was asking God about this insight, and he brought that situation to my mind. He said, that was, a, that was insight. You would not have loved had you not had insight in that situation. And it's like God is saying, many of my people are not loving because they're not taking time to get insight or allowing God to give them spiritual insight into the situation beyond their natural way of thinking. 
so that many times when we should be help to someone or somebody, we may not do it if we don't have the insight. So Paul was saying, I pray, brethren, that your love may abound more and more, a mature kind of love, and, and have insight, into godly insight into the situation so that you can make the right choices. See, I could not have made the wise choice. I was just about to do like everybody else until I got insight into that situation. So it allowed me to be able to make the right choice. And let me tell you the end of that matter. I gained a friend for life. I gained a friend for life. I gained a friend for life. And I can't tell you the many ways that that person later on began to help me in my own life and ministry. But I could have missed it because I didn't understand. So here in the body of Christ, it's like the Lord is saying. Now, listen to what he's saying. Now, go back to verse, uh, chapter 1. I pray that you love me abound more and more in knowledge and in all in judgment and insight. That ye may approve things that are excellent. Or test the things that differ. Or, or he says to discern what is best for them. To make wise choices. Or to discern something that is really, really good. Isn't that right? And so it's, 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 it's just like as a child grows, the more they grow, they make healthy choices. A child as a preteen can make choices that are unwise because of their knowledge, right? And their desires may get in the way of, of just n the knowledge that they have, right? But the, the more they grow, a parent may look at a child's decision or a teen's decision and say, that wasn't wise at all. You should have known better, right? But the whole point is, uh, where they were, they made the best decision that they understood. But now as we grow from childhood to adulthood, we should not, we do not make the same mistakes. Isn't that right? Because now we have grown in understanding, we have grown in insight, we've got more knowledge now, we have a fuller understanding of life and human nature. And so we make those choices based upon a growing knowledge that we have. So Paul is saying, don't murmur and complain, God is working and he's working it out, but you have to cooperate with him. He knows more about the situation that we could ever know. The time is coming that you'll look around at a trial that you have and says, my God, I thank you. I didn't jump out of it. I thank you. I didn't jump ship. I thank you, Lord God. I wanted to get out. I wanted to throw in the towel, but I'm glad you kept me there, Lord God, because I could not have learned what I learned if I had not gone through what I've gone through. So, Lord, you are the wise one. You are the potter, and I am the clay, and I'm going to stay. I'm going to work with you, Lord so that you can do your will in my life come on let's give him some praise hallelujah 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 glory to God glory to God hallelujah the writer says that you may be sincere that means pure of motive my God, I don't know my life. You don't know your heart. God alone knows our hearts. Isn't that right? Bible says the heart is wicked, desperately evil, whatever. Who can know it? Hallelujah. But God in his goodness, because he loves us, he takes us at a pace. And he takes us through trials, working in us by his mighty power. And by his wonderful grace, look at somebody and say, he knows what he's doing. It may seem like he doesn't know what he's doing. But let me tell you right now, this God that you serve, he started his work in you when you had no desire of your own. And he's going to finish it. Hallelujah. Not by might nor by power, but by his divine spirit. He will do his work. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
he will do his work. Hallelujah. So he takes us through. Sometimes trials come up and we look and say, did I do that? Did I say that? I didn't, that wasn't me. God knew it all alone. Hallelujah. He doesn't deal with us after our sins. He's a good savior. Hallelujah. But hallelujah. And so as he was sharing them, as they would cooperate with God, as they cooperate with God, he brings the fruit. You see, this is God's desire. Listen, I can have all the gifts in the world, but that's not fruit. I, 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 did you hear what I said? I've got gifts, but I don't have, if I don't have fruit, this is what God's looking for. Hallelujah, fruit. Hallelujah, fruit. Now, now can I say this to you? Gifts can come with a baby, but fruit takes maturity. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Fruit, have you ever, I mean, I grew up on a farm. And on this, in this farm, I watched trees grow up. It took years. And some of them got to the size, full-grown tree. But they still didn't have no fruit. But the time came when they had fruit. That took some time. You, you, it took not jumping out of the fire when you don't like it. You see, God's working in us. Look, look at somebody say, everything ain't the devil now. God, sometimes he's working, and, and, but he's working. Hallelujah. Why? Because he loves us. He started this thing in you and I. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, enemies, strangers, no such desire to serve the Lord, while we were in that backward state, God sent forth his son. Made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them. And then he said, but God sent his son that we might be saved. But it was while we were sinners. He died for us. He died for us. Does he love us? Oh my God, does he love us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's working in us, saints. He's working in us, um, but there's, we're being conformed. We're being conformed to the image and likeness of God. He's working so beautiful. He's working because he's the potter. He's working so wonderful. He knows how much pressure to put on this vessel. Isn't that right? He, he, he knows because he's, his hands, he put it on the potter's wheel and, and it just holds it right there. And it spins it around. He adds a little water every now and then and, it just, and it's just fashioning it, hallelujah. And until it's molded and fashioned into his image, glory to God. And likeness. You may not appreciate what he's doing now, but I can assure you and myself as well that in the end you're going to say, I thank you so much. I thank you so much. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Because God knows all things. And so Paul encouraged them go ahead on through, don't, don't, don't murmur and complain. You know, do whatever you do, but don't complain and murmur about it. You know, sometimes uh, just, you know, we do something differently because we're different people now. We, we, we are of a different spirit. Hallelujah. We're of a different spirit. And, and, and as, as I, I, I wanted to just, a few little simple things I want to encourage you uh, before, while I'm finishing up here. And that is, um, let's, let's have... A servant spirit. 
As you look at Philippians 2, 5 through 8, you see uh, Christ. Let's have a servant spirit. Nothing is too big for you. Isn't that right? Or too little for you, right? You know, and, and because you never know what God is planning. You never know. See, God, sometimes he tests us to see where our heart is, to see, see if we're willing to serve. You know, and, 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 and I had this friend of mine, another friend from Africa. He was sharing how uh, God sent him to a church there. And he went to this church here, and uh, he brought his credentials, and he was sharing about what he wanted, uh, what he was qualified to do in these things. And then he says, uh, so the pastor took him, asked him if he would uh, do the janitorial service for about, he didn't tell him how long. So he, he agreed, but boy, he, I mean, he laid the man out and laid God out too because it was like, I didn't come here for this. And, and he said, the pastor didn't say anything. He said, but for four months, and finally he came through to him, just do it, but do it with a good attitude. And he changed his attitude, and after four months, pastor brought him up and placed him where God had him in mind for him in the beginning. But you see, sometimes God will test and see. Uh, do we have that servant spirit? Do, do, you know what I'm saying? Do we have that servant spirit? So let's have a servant spirit. That's one thing I'm concluding with. Let's have a servant spirit. Christ did. You know, Christ could have never gone to Calvary if he, had didn't, if he had not taken on him the form of a servant. Listen. This was God. This was the maker of the universe. He could have said, you crazy? I made this world. I'm not going to do no such thing. I, I, look, I made this world. And I made human beings. You asking me to become... Well, what? But he didn't. He had the love in mind. The love and the will of the Father. He said, Father, prepare me a body. I'll go. I'll go. And he went, but he knew this, that if he had not put up, taken upon him the attitude of a servant, he couldn't do the will of the Father. He knew that. So he took upon him the form of a servant. Now, if he had, dealt with, if he had not dealt with the reputation aspect, if he could have said, if he had not Settled in the fact that his service had nothing to do with who he was. Y'all hear me? If he had said, if he said, now, no, 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 I'm a son. A son don't do stuff like that. But he had to take upon him the form of a servant in order to fulfill the father's will. And so he took upon him the form of a servant and became obedient until death, even the death of the cross. But it took servanthood to order to have that mind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In order to serve. So let's have a servant spirit. The second thing I want to share in concluding. Strive to keep unity. Don't be a rabble rouser. I know you're not dead like that, but... I'm making a point. Be a person that fights for unity. You know, don't listen to people that complain all the time. Don't, 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 don't spend time with people that are complainers. Because before you know it, it becomes contagious. Kids, sometimes they hang around guys of the wrong company. And all of a sudden they come home and all of a sudden their attitude has changed. And their parents say, what's, you know, what's wrong with Johnny? Johnny, I've been noticing he's got a bad attitude lately. Come to find out John had been hanging around with Joe, who had a bad attitude. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I'm saying, don't hang around with people that complain all the time. I, you know, you're not better than they are, but you want to become more like Jesus, right? Yeah. So, if you want to become more like Jesus, don't hang around with people that find fault. Okay, Larry, come on, come on. <laughs> don't hang around with people that's always finding fault. Look for the good in people's life. Isn't that right? Look for the good. Strive to keep unity. If somebody complains, the brother says, you know what? We really need to be praying for that rather than talking about it. Because we've learned 
what words do. See, this is love. Now, we understand what words do, right? Bad words corrupt good manners. And so, God, I pass this on you. Let's strive to keep unity. Strive to keep unity in the church. If a mother's not talking right, a deacon's not talking right, if a pastor's not talking right, or a sister's not acting right, or so on, pray for them, you know. Just pray for them. Don't, don't go and tell nobody else. Don't do that. Love covers. Love covers. Come on, y'all. Love covers. Isn't that right? Love covers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's strive to keep you on a day. The third thing is, don't see yourself better than anybody else. That's what Paul said. Esteem others better than yourself. I had a friend one day. And I was asking God, I said, Lord, how do you do that? How do you, how do you esteem somebody better than yourself? We all have egos. You know, how, how, you, how do you do that? And I had this friend. And he was, at the time, my best friend. He's gone now. And we would go out to eat. And uh, I'd, we'd fight to get the door with one another. And then he would say, brother, this all right? See, yeah, this all right. Or if, I, if I got my plate first, I'd say, this all right, brother? Or it was like we end up preferring one before the other, right? And God said, that's, that's, that's what that is. You prefer one before another. Now I had... I say this softly, I had another friend. They always wanted to, to be the lead and everything. So I just sat right back, went right along with them. I did it to get along. But if I had stopped to say, no, let's go here, brother. <laughs> <laughs> You, you know the story, right? <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> amen, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's be outward focus. Others centered. It's not always easy, but listen. The more we practice it, the better we get at it. But if we don't practice it, can't get good at it, right? Because God gets involved. He gets involved when you do it. So let's be others centered instead of selfish, self centered. And then the last thing is humbleness of mind. Humbleness of mind. I remember asking God, Lord, how do we do this? <laughs> we know that it's by the Spirit, right? But there still has to be a cooperation, right? Now, the Spirit got everything we need. He's going to help us get every step of the way where we need to go, but it still requires some cooperation, right? So now, if God says, I want you to go here, he said, no, I think I'm going to go here. If I practice that a lot, then what happens is I'm not going to grow, right? Because I'm not understanding how growth comes. But if we say, go here, and my mind says, well, you know what? Okay, Lord, you say. It's like what Peter said. Peter, and, and, and I was studying that, that text too. Peter um, got ready to, um, uh, they had finished their nets of fishing overnight. They had been overnight, all night long out there. And they were fishermen. And they knew the best time to fish. But for some strange reason, they caught nothing. So there they were coming up in the morning, start to clean their nets and everything. So Jesus comes by the shore, the lake, and he sees the two ship, two boats there. So he looked at Simon's boat and says, take me out a little further. And he, so he pushed him out there and he began to preach on the water. And then after he finished, then he said, um, cast the net, he said, launch out into the deep and cast the net on the right side. Now, can you just imagine this professional fisherman saying, I don't mean no disrespect. (laughs) 
we, we, we know the fish. We know the stray, Lord. You know, I know you were a carpenter, and you know, I know that you, 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 you meant well. I know that, but we, we, we know the stray. <laughs> but what did he say? He said, Lord, we, we've toiled all the night. We, we worked hard all night. But nevertheless, that's your word. Don't let down the net. Y'all hear what we're saying? Come on, let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. 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 I love Jesus today. And I know and I believe you love Jesus too. I know that. I believe it. I believe it. So come on, let's give him some praise in the house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God's got you. No matter what it looks like, he got you. Don't you worry. Don't you spend another night worrying. God's got you. He's got you. Father, I thank you. I give your name to praise. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. You got us, Lord. You got big hands. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, your hands are so big. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. They're so big. Hallelujah. We're going to trust you, God. We're going to give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the body of Christ. Bless us now. Bless us, Lord, and by your grace. Our love is being perfected. Oh, my God, we thank you, Father. Ah, oh, you're working in us, Lord, God. Oh, by your spirit, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, our homes, our loved ones, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I saw your 